Merry Christmas and welcome to some time in the Word with Richmond Hill Community Church. Krista and I are sincerely hoping that you have had a chance to spend some time today with family or friends or someone that's just very close to you. And if not, we pray that you would feel the joy of God's presence close to you today. Maybe you've had a chance to exchange some gifts as you took time to celebrate the birth of Jesus together. No doubt you have. It's Christmas Day, a day when the gifts that we give to each other serve as a reminder of the greatest gift of all, God's gift of his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Along these lines, I just wanted to share with you for a few moments today about the very first gift exchange. But before I do, um, if you have your Bibles handy with you, I want you to turn them up to the book of Matthew and let's experience God's word together. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. That's Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Feel free to pause and look it up and then continue the video. It says this, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then... Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for this child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So, before we unpack this a little bit, a little slice of context for you. Now, the truth is, there are stacks and stacks of misconceptions and legends about the, this biblical account of the Magi from the East. Number one, they were not Oriental kings, as a certain carol may imply, but in fact were wise men, which means that they were very likely astronomers. Number two, there were not only three, but probably a great company. I know, I know, three gifts, three wise men. Mm, not so much. Number three, they didn't visit Jesus on the night of his birth but probably several months later. Anyone's mind blown? I remember when I first realized these things about the Magi. Moral of the story, don't believe everything you hear in a Christmas carol or see on the front of a Christmas card. Three things we do know as fact. They were wise men, they were carrying gifts, and they traveled a long way to see Jesus. 
Actually, there's one more important fact about this visit that trumps anything else. It's contained in verse 11a, so the first part of verse 11. It says this, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. More important than the wisdom they held, more important than the distance they traveled, more important than the gifts they carried, is the fact that they first and foremost worshipped Jesus. The very first thing that they did in the presence of the newborn king was to worship. In their great wisdom, they recognized that absolutely nothing was more important than acknowledging the lordship of Jesus. They truly viewed Jesus as a gift to the world in which they lived. And they were filled with joy. They were overjoyed at the opportunity to bow down and worship. And they did so by giving themselves to him. Now look, this Christmas season and always, these facts still hold true for all of Jesus' true followers. In his book, Micro Churches, A Smaller Way, Brian Sanders says this about the reality of worship. To worship is to bring our lives moment by moment into the reality of God's kingdom and to be fully subject to the totality of his rule. He goes on to say, to live in worship and submission is to accept an entirely new way and to see and live, sorry, an entirely new way to see and live in the world. It is to accept not just God's grace, but also his way. This is why the church cannot be the church without this condition of utter submission. We may struggle to embody his way, but it must be our common covenant. We may struggle to love and accept each other, but his way is our common bond. First and foremost, we are called to worship Jesus, to acknowledge him as Lord, and then to point each other to him through the way that we live our lives from day to day. Our acknowledgement of Jesus' Lordship is of far more importance than anything that we can give or do in service to Him. In fact, our worship, it is our worship, rather, that gives life to these things. It is our worship that manifests the reality of joy, that reality that we desperately need in our lives today that reality that we've been talking about this Christmas. You see, when we choose to worship first, as the wise men did, we are true, truly choosing to confess his lordship over our lives. When we choose to worship first, we are choosing to acknowledge Jesus as the ultimate gift, a gift of great joy, a gift of great joy in our own personal lives, and a gift of great joy to all people everywhere. A gift that's worth sharing with others. So as we just wrap up our time today, I just want to leave you with some words concerning worship that Paul left with us in the book of Romans. Romans 12, 1 to 2, if you'd like to look it up with me. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then 
you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. These words remind us that before anything else, we may offer to God as an act of worship, he first and foremost wants us. Let me leave you today with some more words from author Brian Sanders. He says this, Worship is not just about admiring God or even praising Him. It is about responding to His mercy by offering all that we are to Him and walking as nonconformists in this broken world. We become agents of his kingdom and revolutionaries who are transformed by an inward and invisible renewal. May this be true of us as we consider in a fresh way this Christmas season what it means to come before the greatest gift of all in joy-filled worship in joyful expectation. Let's pray together in these moments. God, we thank you so very much for the gift that is your Son, Jesus Christ. God, uh, we recognize today your Lordship in our lives. And God, we recognize from your word that it is more important that we worship you as Lord than anything else we can bring to you in worship. Any of our gifts, any of our talents, any of our money. God, if we are to confess you as Lord, to turn from our ways, to follow the example of your son Jesus, that is what you want for us. You want each one of those whom you created to be in relationship with you through the person of your son, Jesus. So God, as we spend the rest of this Christmas day, may it hit us as a stark reality what you did for us in sending your son at Christmas. But God, may we view Christmas in the shadow of the cross, knowing that we are in between two advents, that we are awaiting his glorious return when everything will be made right and when we will be made whole again. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.